In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel reading this morning tells us, in the words of Jesus, that the only way we can come to know the Father is through him. And that raises the question as to how or where we meet Jesus today in ways that enable us to know God. And the answer, I think, lies in this. Every time we meet to make Eucharist, we proclaim that we are the body of Christ. We are chosen to become his body, his presence in the world today. And therefore, it follows that through us, that body of Christ, that presence in the world, that others will come to know the Father. Jesus sets out what he was about in that sermon he preached in the synagogue at the start of his earthly mission. He'd come to bring liberty, to free people from those things which entrap them. He came to preach that the basic currency between God, our neighbour and ourselves was love, not law. He wanted to show people the possibilities of the new life which comes to those who live in the power of the resurrection. Now, there are times when I find it almost too embarrassing to admit to being a Christian. It's those times when I hear some people who are alleged to be Christians throw common sense and reason to the wind. All I need to do, I think they believe, is to believe in a God who's a puppet master and that ensures salvation. There was a parishioner of mine in Portsmouth who explained to me that when she went into town shopping, she would pray to God for a parking space. When one appeared, of course, it was God who had found it for her. Hallelujah! But at the same time, I was visiting a 14-year-old boy who was dying of cancer. I was naturally praying for his healing but he died so i'm expected to believe in a god who's a parking attendant but not one who can heal a 14 year old boy no 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 thanks the same is true of those who defy social isolating and social distancing and refuse to take precautions aimed at stopping the spread of this wretched virus. That woman who went stopped by the police and was told that she shouldn't be travelling replied that she was immune, it was okay, because she was washed in the blood of Jesus. Now you and I know that she's probably bonkers, but she was described as a Christian, and so are you and I. So is it her and the woman who uses God as the parking attendant or us that reveal God on the streets today. Well, I hate to be judgmental, but of course you know that means I'm just about to be, but I actually believe it's us. It's communities like those who meet at the Chapel Royal, where people come to find their loving father. But it's the others who will always attract the publicity. When you and I worship, there's an equal emphasis in that worship on word and sacraments. There is a balanced diet. And I suspect the lady covered in the blood of Jesus relies entirely on the word and her interpretation of it. To us, the word opens up the wonderful works of God. The sacraments cause us to celebrate those wonderful works. The sacraments help us to look at the world and see something of God in it. And we use the stuff of creation, like water, oil, the laying on of hands, metal, as in the wedding ring, for example, to be the outward signs of something much deeper. Many of those who we might call fundamentalists reject the sacraments, I suspect, precisely because they involve the material world and are not satisfied, they're wanting, they're yearning for things that are only spiritual. The word helps us understand the sacraments, but that balanced diet of word and sacrament 
ensure our spiritual health and growth. And because we are the body of Christ and become that body through word and sacrament and celebrating it, we are more than mere bystanders in God's mission. We're called to be deeply involved in that work. The Gospel this morning tells us we are to do the work of Christ and astoundingly to do even greater work. In the coming months and years, we will undoubtedly see an increase of those who will want to hear the good news to the poor proclaimed, and there will be many, many, many more people than there are now. There will be many imprisoned by a multitude of things, not just prison walls, but mental illness issues, poverty, health issues, poor housing and unemployment. There will be many who will be imprisoned within themselves by a lack of self-worth. There will be those who remain blind to the plight of many in our society, and it will be for us to open their eyes. Many who are feeling oppressed because they will think themselves unwanted in our country. There will be many others oppressed by the sheer weight of their problems. They will need to be helped onto the path that leads to their true liberation. And guess what? It's down to us to shout these things from the rooftops as our way of proclaiming the year of the Lord's favour. 